Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about the Poisson distribution uh, or Poisson random variables. Uh, I suppose I could say either one. Anyway, let me get started before I ramble on any further. So uh, Poisson random variables are, are really interesting. They actually have a really interesting uh, history that I will very briefly relate here. Uh, Poisson was a French mathematician who studied probability theory and he came up with this um, density function it said that basically said, hey, here is this thing that could be a probability density function. But he had no idea if it was actually a thing that occurred in the world or not. He was just a mathematician, not a researcher. And he died years before anybody ever used his, uh, used his distribution to calculate any probabilities in a functional sense. Um, years later, uh, in the early 1800s, I think the, the early 19th century, a Polish quartermaster in the Prussian army, I believe in the Prussian army, named Borkevich. I don't, I don't remember what his first name is, and I'm sure I'm butchering his last name because he's Polish. There's a bunch of C's and Z's in there, but it's, I think it's Borkevich. Um, happened to be familiar with the Poisson distribution. And he also happened to be studying the number of deaths per year by accidental horse kick in the Prussian army, of all things. Um, that was just a thing that happened uh, in, in the Prussian army at, the, at that time. And you got around by horse. Sometimes you're standing on the wrong end of the horse when it kicks. Um, and so they, he, was, he was responsible for, I, I don't know what he, why he was studying this exactly, but he was. He wrote down the number of uh, deaths that there were in various years and happened to notice that it perfectly fit a Poisson distribution. And it did. It's really neat, actually. Um, and that this was like this is like 50 or 60 years after Poisson had died. And this was the first recorded use or first known use of anybody using the Poisson distribution for anything useful. Turns out it's actually super useful. This is this is actually a really common distribution to use. And we'll see more of it um, when we get to the, the exponential distribution in topic six, because those two are, are related in an interesting way that I won't that I won't detail here. We'll talk about it then. Um, but basically it's very vague. <laughs> it's extremely vague. Uh, it's hard to tell when you would use a Poisson distribution, as you can tell by the fact that it took 50 years after Poisson died for anybody to use it. Um, but what it does is it counts occurrences of a specific event in a specified time and or place, which you might notice is very general. <laughs> there, there are a lot, of a lot of events that occur in a defined time and or place. Um, so and on a test question, I will, I will specify like this follows a Poisson distribution or something to that effect, like you'll see on the next page. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what it counts. Um, yeah, I guess I don't want to go into too much more detail. I'll let you read more about Poisson uh, random variables if you want to. Or in your book, uh, something like the Wikipedia page is actually significantly more interesting than the book is. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you read more about them. But that's uh, that's what they do. They they count events happening in a time and or place. Usually, usually time and place. All right, so lambda, this is a lowercase Greek L. Uh, looks like a little, I don't know, a, a little house or something. Hard, hard, hard to describe what that looks like. Um, we, will, we will use that a, a few more times. This is the symbol that we use for the average number of occurrences in the defined time and or space. So we'll, we'll see how we're gonna use that in just a second, but uh, that, that's, uh, that's what we use in this particular random variable. All of these things, all these choices of, of letters and whatnot, they're all historically related. So somebody at some point decided to use lambda and then we just use lambda forever. That's why lambda. It's not because this, this has the, I, I'm sure it had a meaning at the time, but I, it's, I don't know what it is. All right, anyway, here we go. We got a factory and it has on average five industrial accidents per year. So the number of accidents follows a Poisson distribution. So in other words, if we took the number of accidents in like, let's say 50 years at this factory, which probably the number changes over time, but let's say 50 years, they, they have five, five uh, per year. 
And we graphed the number and we said, all right, well, they had zero accidents three times. And they had 10 or they had one accident eight times. And they had two accidents 13 times, right? And we, we just made a histogram out of the, the, the like three, eight, 13. That's, that's what the Poisson distribution is. So I want to find the probability that there were three or fewer accidents. That is to say that X is less than or equal to three. So I want to do the same thing that I did um, for uh, um, binomial distribution. And I want to write down all of the possible outcomes. Now here, there's technically an infinite number of possible outcomes. So I can't write them all down, obviously. But what I can do is something like this. We could get zero or one or two or three or four or five, six. I think I asked about eight. I asked about eight, eight, nine, and then up. Right, so dot dot dot, just going on in that direction. I just mean this, just this ellipsis, just means continue on in this fashion, which is to say all the numbers up forever. Okay, I wanted to find the probability that x was less than or equal to three, so that means that I am interested in these right here, zero, one, two, three. Now I could calculate Poisson PDF of zero and one and two and three, but I won't. I'm going to use Poisson CDF of three. So let's go to the calculator and do that. And then we'll, we'll do this in um, either Sheets or Excel after this. Uh, yeah, so oh, I've already got it. Sorry, I was <laughs> just looking at these. Yeah, let's uh, clear that off from the, uh, from the binomial video. So uh, I wanna go to distributions. So second VARs to Poisson CDF. Um, oh, they're calling it mu here. Ah, all right. So your calculator by mu, they mean lambda. They used to have lambda here. I don't know why they changed it. Everybody uses lambda. But anyway, mu is the same thing as lambda in this part in uh, Poisson problems. So our mean number of accidents per year was five. That was the average number. And so that's that's what we're using for our, our average number of outcomes, our average, average number of events. We are interested in finding whether there were three or fewer. So zero, one, two, three. So our X value is three. That's it, that's all we gotta put it in. Uh, so Poisson CDF of five, uh, average of five, so lambda is five and three outcomes is this. There's a 26.5% chance that we get exactly three industrial accidents at this factory. Let's go write that down. That was this page, this page. All right, so for less than or equal to three. Oh, sorry, I said exactly three. I meant three or fewer, I apologize. So this is 26.5%. Uh, All right, I wanna find the probability that X equals zero, which I would interpret as there are no industrial accidents that particular year, right? That is, that is an option. So let's see what uh, what we would get there. So here I want to use Poisson PDF because it's equals of zero. So we're going to go to distributions, Poisson PDF. Average number of accidents in a year is five. I want to know what the probability of getting no accidents is. Uh, small, 0 0.0067, so about... 0.67%. Let's write that down. Not very likely they probably need to, you know, probably need to beef up their safety precautions. All right. And then I want to know what's the probability that, that they have at least eight industrial accidents at this, uh, at this factory in a year. Hopefully not too high because that's a lot of industrial accidents. Let's go look at it. So I'm going to do uh, one minus CDF of seven here. So let's uh, let's go see why we're doing that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> that's that's this. So here I'm looking for eight or more, right? So this. Whoop. Hello. Eight or more. There we go. So all these, right? And that box goes up forever. Now, 
hopefully there won't be like there's a low probability of getting you know like a thousand accidents a thousand industrial accidents at this one plant presumably they would close it before that but still uh, i want to do eight up to potentially infinity accidents and so what i'm going to do because your calculator will not do um greater than or equal to it'll only do less than or equal to i have to do the same thing i was doing before of one minus the stuff that I don't want. So I have to do one minus CDF of seven, right? So I have to do one minus Poisson CDF of seven with an average of, with a lambda of five. So let's go to the calculator and do that. So I'm gonna do one minus Poisson CDF U of five, X of seven. And we get this. So there is a 13% chance, that's that's awfully high, of getting eight or more industrial accidents in a single year. That sounds that sounds like a lot of industrial accidents. I probably don't want to work there. What we said it was 13.33%. And there you go. And that's that's kind of all I want to say about that. Um, there's not much more to say about Poisson other than, yeah, we'll revisit this later when we talk about exponential uh, distributions. Turns out that Poisson events are separated by exponential wait times. So uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see that uh, coming up. Um, but for now, I think that's all I want to say. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. So I will see you guys in the next video.